Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. I'm making a video to explain a specific mechanic that involves an enemy walking back and forth on a platform. Um, we'll call this enemy patrol. And this is obviously a simple demonstration designed to obviously explain to you how to get any character, any sprite to walk back and forth on a platform for whatever reason that you specifically creatively need. Um, we're going to specifically go into the event sheet. In terms of artwork, we have some simple, basic objects here. And what we have here are two boundaries that are going to be initially visible. As you can see here, this is not checked. Okay, so they are initially uh, invisible. We have an enemy here that has some basic behaviors. The enemy specifically has solid platform and physics. Physics so it can fall down onto the platform. Platform so we have controls and we can move the enemy. And then solid so that obviously it doesn't fall through um, the platform, which is this. So our platform has behaviors and it's just a simple solid behavior and it's static, it just sits there. The boundaries have no behaviors, as you can see. The only thing that's special about these is that they are not visible initially and they're actually never gonna be visible. So if you have those things set up, um, we can go into the event sheet. So obviously at this point in um, the video, I would suggest making sure your behaviors are set up appropriately. So I'm gonna pull up in the enemy behavior. I'm gonna pull up the non-existent boundary behavior. Oh, I thought I could do this in two different windows. That's disappointing. Um, okay, well, set, I thought I was gonna put all three of these up so that you could see them. Um, but obviously if you need to do the enemy behaviors, pause this video right now and make sure that your enemy has those behaviors. So after that, you want to obviously make sure your platform has these behaviors. So pause the video and apply this behavior. Okay, moving forward, remember that the boundaries themselves are not visible. So as you can see, we have boundary, enemy, and platform, okay? I'm gonna give you those files, um, and if you're working with the files right now, you obviously already know. If you're watching this before you do the project, I will give you these files, um, enemy, boundary, and platform. And moving forward beyond this mechanic video, we will talk about how to make, um, officially, the artwork for Construct, whether they're just placeholders like you see here, or it's um, pixel art and things that you would actually like to use that show the artistic work of your game. But if you have your objects, as you can see here, one called boundary, one called enemy, the other called platform, you're gonna jump over to the event sheet and this is the code that you wanna more or less do. Now the problem that you're gonna run into with your limited experience moving into this unit um, is setting up a couple things that you've never done before, such as set direction to one, um, calling uh, an existing variable that already is there, um, and then actually manipulating it by multiplying it by a negative one. Those are some things that you've never done before. So I'm gonna rebuild this event sheet and explain it as we go, and you're gonna follow along and get it done. Super simple. Okay, I'm going to try to duplicate this event sheet on top below just so that you can see what I'm doing above and how I'm recreating it down below. And if it doesn't work, I'll obviously have to delete all of these things and then recreate them from the ground up. But I'd rather have you see this as I develop it below. So the first thing we're going to do is take care of um, this event and the action that goes with the event. Okay, so the event is when the layout starts. So specifically, when we press, press play, that is this layout starting. So when this starts, the enemy's direction is gonna be set to one. So the question is, what is direction? So initially, you're gonna think that it might be a property that you could call, and it's actually not. It is what they call the instance variable. 
So you're going to click on your enemy, and you're going to come over here to your instance variables, and you're going to click it, and there will not be an instance variable in your box. You're going to click add new instance variable. You're going to type the word direction here. You're going to keep it as a number, and then you're going to set the initial value to leave it at zero. Okay, so when you say okay, you'll see this in your instance variable box. And at that time, you can now program what you set it to, which is what you see up here above. We'll talk more about what instance variables do when it's more appreciated. So at this point, just trust me that we're going to need an instance variable. Now let's make the code. So you're going to click add an event. As you can see, it's a system event. So we're going to double click system. And then we're going to type on start. And as you type on start, the filter will show you what's available. Click next. And so now we have on start of layout. You're going to click add action. And this is an action specific to the enemy. You're going to click next. And now if you type in set, the question is, what do we set? We just made an instance variable called direction. So as you can see, instance variables, we're going to set the value for direction. So we're going to click next. And you're just going to type in a 1. We only have one instance variable here. And we're going to set it to 1, as you can see in my model code up here above. So you're going to say done. And that is the entire first line of code. As you can see, these are duplicated now. All right. Moving forward, we're going to now take the enemy and we are going to set its direction to negative one, the instance variable. And then this is the event. So when it sees this, it's going to set the enemy to mirrored and then tell it to go left. So basically, when this number is set to one or negative one, it will go left or right. So when it's set to 1, it's going to go right. When it's set to left, it's going to go left. And if this were a character, you wouldn't want it walking backwards. So you would have to mirror it and not mirror it before or after it moves. And you're going to see that in a moment when we actually simulate this, this game. So we have, once again, the first line of code. So let's go and set the enemy's instance variable direction to negative 1 in the condition that we're going to check for. We are checking to see if the enemy's instance variable is negative 1, and then we'll do stuff. So we're going to go to enemy, and then we're going to type in uh, compare. And when you type in compare, you have compare instance variable. So we're going to double click. And we're going to say equals to. We're going to check to see if the direction is equal to a number. And we're going to specifically specify negative 1. As you can see, whenever you see an equals, a greater than, a less than, a greater than an equals, or so forth, those are comparative operators. And what that does is it allows you to compare things. So whenever you see event sheets with equal signs, typically you're going to be comparing a value. So those are the terms that you're going to be searching for. Um, as you can see, I typed compare and instance variable showed up. So when I click next, I have that equal sign, but there's a couple others here, right? So we can check to see if it's equal or not equal or less less than or greater than, um, and so forth, as we can keep moving. So specifically for this one, we're going to see if it's equal to. And if it is equal to, the action is going to be an enemy action. And we are going to set MIR, right? And then we have mirrored here. So we're going to do set mirrored. And as you can see, we can toggle to mirrored or not mirrored. So we're going to specifically set mirrored, say done. And then we're going to add a second action to this one condition. So there's two things that are going to happen when this one thing occurs. So we're going to hit an enemy. You've done this before. Simulate, control, and we're going to hit next. And then we're going to press left. This is a simulate, meaning you don't have to actually press a key. It does it automatically. That's the simulate part. When you say done, 
our second line of code is done. These two lines of code are done. Remember, I am copying these as my example. I'm just trying to rebuild this so you can see me naturally do it and you can copy my steps. Moving forward, we are going to check to see if the enemy collides with the boundary that is invisible. So we are going to add an event. As you can see, these are the, the first things are the first things you click on. So we're going to do an enemy event and then we're going to type on collision on collision with another object. The question is, this is the object, so we need to select that object here, boundary, say OK, and done. As you can see, we've duplicated this block of code here to here, minus the actions. So let's do the actions. Add action. It's an enemy action. And we are going to set. Now, it's not a direction. It happens to be an instance variable. So we are going to set a value to the instance variable again. This time it's going to be a little bit different, as you can see here. So we're going to say next. And the question is, what is this stuff right here? Enemy dot direction in parentheses multiplied by negative one. What's going on here is you need to see what it already is. Meaning if it's negative one or positive one, we're going to multiply it by negative one and flip that number. So regardless of whatever the value is, we need to multiply whatever the value is by negative one. So in computer science, we can't say by whatever the value is. We need to call the abstract name of that potential value. So you're just going to type enemy. And if you type en, right, the objects over here on the right will pop up, right? I could type boundary, right? I don't want to do boundary. So we're going to type in enemy, press enter, enemy dot dir. So enemy dot something, the dot something will be calling the instance variable that belongs to the enemy. So if I do enemy dot direction, that gets the enemy's instance variable under the name direction. So if it's set to one, it returns one. If it's set to negative one, it returns negative one. Whatever it's set to, this is the abstract form. That is the variable for that enemy's instance, in which I'll elaborate more on further later. Let's put that in parentheses. So we're going to bring this up. Otherwise, it creates a syntax issue. So let's put those in parentheses. And now we have it wrapped in parentheses. That equals a number. We are going to do Shift-8 or do the star symbol. Shift-8, star. That is our multiplication operator negative one. So we're going to take enemy dot direction multiplied by negative one. Enemy dot direction is wrapped in parentheses. And you're just going to say done. Now that we have this, this is identical to this. The last line of code we're going to do is this one. Moving forward, it's an enemy event. We're going to check to see, just like before, if it was negative one, we're going to check to see if it's positive one. To be honest, we could probably just copy and paste this line of code, right? We probably could, but I want to naturally build this so that you can see it naturally happen. So we're going to duplicate the fourth line organically down here. So we're going to go event, enemy, and then we're going to set... Actually, no, we need to compare, right? We're not setting, we are comparing. So we have to compare instance variable because there's an equal sign. Let's move this over so you can see the line four right above, right? We are working on this. So we're gonna see if it's not negative one, we're gonna see if it's positive one. So we're gonna compare instance variable. We're gonna see if it's equal to one, done, right? This matches this. Trying to simulate what it's gonna be like when I give you event sheets for you to copy that are not assisted through video. So we have direction equal one, and now we're gonna add an enemy actions, two enemy actions. One of them is gonna be set it to not mirrored, and the other one's gonna be simulate to go right. Remember, because we already did left. So it's this set of controls, okay? So we're gonna do these two down here. So first let's do enemy simulate, so enemy, Sim, control, we already went, remember we are doing right, so we already went left, so we're gonna go right, done. 
All right, and the last thing on line four, which is our last line of code, is enemy not mirrored. So we're gonna hit enemy. Set, mirrored. I know I said not mirrored, but you have to start with mirrored, and you'll see in a second. So select set mirrored. Next, now drop this down and select not mirrored, and hit done. So I'm gonna delete my first four lines of code because that was my copy source as I was trying to walk you through what was already created. So let's delete that. And now we have the same code that I had when I started with. And if I press play, it should work. A couple other things I forgot to mention, um, which would be, let's just double check, make sure initial visibility is unchecked. Um, if I didn't mention that, and I, I think I did, but just in case I didn't. And when you press play, you should not see your boundaries. As you can see here, we do have a speed issue. I think it's going a little bit on the fast side, but you can see it flips, right? It's walking, flip, walking, flip, walking, flip. So that is the mirrored state. And so when the layout started, the direction was instantly set to one, which means that this line of code here immediately told it to go right. After it went right, it hit the enemy, which then you multiplied that value by negative one, which flipped its value to negative one. So when it hit negative one, line two saw that, it mirrored the enemy, and then it started to move it. As it was moving it, it went to the other side hit the boundary. At that time, the number flipped. Line four recognized that. It then simulated control going to the right and mirrored it. So once again, it's not necessarily a game. This is a mechanic that you can employ into your games as we build more understanding. At this time, I don't think I'm going to explain anything further, but what I would like you to do is demonstrate this mechanic working on your computer and then turn in a copy of your event sheet. See if I can pull this up. Your event sheet and your simulated game like this into the Google Classroom. So you're going to hit your screen capture tool. You're going to grab a screen capture, which I don't know if this is copying it. You're going to copy it, and then you're going to then paste it into a Google document. So if I open up a blank Google document, we would call this enemy control. So let's go over to enemy patrol. mechanic and then your name followed by just a screen capture of what you did okay and then you're just going to turn this into Google Classroom right um, I'm going to obviously just put my name on this so that I know it belongs to me okay uh, this is going to obviously be used in a lot of different ways. We can slow things down and we can talk about the speed in a different video. So hopefully this has showed you some valuable things and um, it hasn't drawn on too long. At this time we are done. If you have any questions, please let me know in class. Have a great day.